but but this like going here and actually going oh no not the not the bliss bomb not the yeah. i feel this is i'm i'm getting just like ah oh. no not that no no no, no. all the way in here knowing and then... something yeah knowing yeah, yeah, yeah. something that to me that feels like authentic love when you yeah. know something it's like ah oh, it just feels so good Oh, I yeah. know and, this. And you know it feels so secure. Much. <laughs> it's you like, know so much. Yes, like you when do. you really get in there yes. and ask an intelligent question, it turns out that you know pretty much damn near anything you want to ask a question on, you know. Still and silent. Calm before the storm. Gold and diamonds. Jewels behind. Hi guys, welcome back to True Sacred Union. I am Debbie Dubois and I am here with my really good friend, Hamish Bartholomeus. Hamish. Hi there. It's been a long time. <laughs> it feels like it's been forever. Well, I went and checked and I think it's been about six weeks since, re since we recorded a video together. So yeah, but it does, doesn't it feel a lot longer in some ways? Yeah, yeah, it does. It feels like six months to me. It, um, it's kind of, it's gone really quickly, but it's also, yeah, feels like it's been forever. Yeah, I think that after that video that we did, it was a little bit about going into hermit mode. And I, I kind of feel like what I did was like drop the mic and I just took my camera stuff down. I mean, I still, I have my uh, studio lighting. I keep that up just for my lighting in my, in my apartment. But I put everything away. I just felt like. I don't really, I don't really feel like I'm going to be doing videos for a little while. So I know you've been doing videos though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not, but not many, uh, or it doesn't feel like I've been doing many. So it's been, we've all been in hermit mode a bit. And like we were, we were saying before, not just us, like it seems like a lot of people have been, have pulled back from what they had been really busy doing in the last few years. They've taken a step back from that whether yeah. they're re reassessing it or whatever. Um, and we also, both of us noticed that there were some people, slightly bigger names in the spaces perhaps, that didn't take a step back over the last six or eight weeks, but they've just been on repeat, just putting out the same stuff continually, like on autopilot. So it's really, it's been quite an interesting time. Well, it brings me to the video that you did on Shepherds. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the videos which, <laughs> which came from a conversation between you and I well what's so funny and I was just joking with Hamish about this before we came on it's like for some reason I mean we're just so much on same mission that I'll mm. drop him a message and I'll be like this is what I'm working on and this is what I'm thinking and this is where I'm at and then he'll be like I just dropped a video on that an hour ago <laughs> Are you kidding? No way. And then I'm like, but it's cool. It's cool because I really don't want to do videos right now and you're getting the message out. So, so yeah. it, it's getting covered. But at the, at the same time, I'm thinking, should I be, should I be saying my stuff about that too? Yeah. <laughs> and I thought if I started yeah. putting out videos and we started turning out videos that were very similar, people would be like, Okay, we got your number. You guys are calling each other up before school saying, <laughs> I'm wearing Levi's today. What are you wearing? That's what yeah, it don't, <laughs> don't wear your Converse today. Wear, wear something <laughs> else. That's what I'm wearing. No, yeah. but well, see, the girls, we wanted to wear the same thing. So it's like, mm, what are you wearing? True. Okay, I got to dress the same. You just told yep. me just what I needed to know about the boys. You guys yeah, weren't saying yeah. that. 
<laughs> oh no, 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 no. Boys don't want to wear the same thing. They need to be wearing different things. Ah, I get it. I get it. Um, um well, anyways, ju just to go back to that shepherd video that you did, I mean, there were so many things that have been rumbling around with me about the shepherds and I'll, and I'll tell you what that is. And I, and when I say shepherds guys, what I'm talking about are thought leaders or new age community leaders or people that have really made, um, their social media presence is their existence. And so there's a great pressure for people that have done this. And I, trust me, I've been there before. There's a great deal of pressure to create content and keep the narratives going. And because a lot of times it's about keeping your name in front of people and, um, and feeling, I think even more than that, it's just feeling like you're in the know. Like people expect you, if they're following you, they want to know that you're in the know. And mm. I think that what has been really bothering me about all of that is I've been seeing a lot of generalizations, like this is what's happening. And I'm thinking, don't tell me what's happening to me. That's not happening to me. Mm. And, um, and I see it a little bit as, it, it speaks to the other video that you just did, the natural, the natural versus the mimic. The natural world, the natural universe, if we talk about the new earth, if we talk about getting out of here and going home, whatever that is, that's natural. Yeah. But what we seem to have is another entity in the realm that is trying to steer us towards the matrix, towards the non-natural, the mimic. And the overlook. Right. So there's a lot of that new age... Um, new age stuff still still present and it seems like a lot of people that don't even necessarily realize they're doing it i tend to think of it as as almost like they're not even not even cognizant of the fact that they might be being used to steer uh, people in a certain direction so i feel that most most of if we're talking about shepherds from that point of view like like thought leader shepherds um yeah i feel i feel a lot of them and not like they're plugged into a source and and this is kind of what i mean i don't even know if it came across i can't even think of the name of the video i had but I, the picture i had in my mind was train tracks and all these different train tracks going off the main line and being of differing lengths but they're all dead ends they don't go anywhere and i think maybe there were two or three paths in the cover shot of the video but this was a conversation i'll be having with quite a few people around it and it was like these these thought leaders these people that people are following these shepherds they're following potential futures they follow like they're getting given information that's designed to steer them and the group that's following them down a potential timeline or a potential future and or i mean to describe that in a different way to bring part of that potential reality into the mainstream timeline because let's say there is only one timeline you can't like there's no we're not actually getting pulled off what we're doing is inviting stuff in all the time and so yes. if a big enough group invites something in then it has to come through the front door and and this has been going on a lot i mean and and i don't think they know no. i don't think i don't think they've done a deal with the devil i don't think they've no. done like i i just don't think that they're aware of what's going on and there would have been a place where you could see ah oh, that's where it flipped from this was okay to this is starting to look a bit questionable but there's this place where you've got the momentum and you've got the followers and you've got the, you're helping people people keep sending you messages saying how much what you're saying and what you're doing is helping them you don't want to let people down so you take the next step and potentially that next step is off a cliff with a lot of people if you're getting if your guidance is coming through channels that are you know anti-human worst case but just trying to lead you in a, a differing direction that's not that's not a great place to be and you and i have been watching this a lot with and not just us lots of lots of people around us have been watching these bigger these bigger names who <clears throat> do a lot of generalization and do a lot of telling you what's going on. This is what I've noticed is yeah. 
I don't get on and tell people what's going on. Yeah, we're I not just, newscasters. I, we're not newscasters. <laughs> and the interesting thing about that is we haven't got these massive followings. Right. But there can be these people who just all they do is they get on and they say, this is what's going on. And it's not really what's going on at well, all. It might be going on for them, but it's not going well, on for no. everybody else. It, exactly. It's a point of view and potentially quite a skewed point of view. And they have massive followings because a lot of people want to be told what's going on. They're like, I don't get it. I don't know what's happening. Tell me what's going on. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's not, it doesn't work that way. That's, that's a very good indicator of the synthetic versus the natural is the good synthetic point. is very happy to tell you what's going on. Whereas the natural is saying, I can't tell you what you're experiencing. You have yes. to experience it. I can give you pointers, but it's your experience, not mine. And, and I mean, this was, this was something I was thinking of as you were talking earlier on before, something I didn't bring up in the Shepherd video because I really try to limit myself to 15 minutes. It works well for Instagram. <laughs> doesn't doesn't work for when you're here with me. <laughs> no, 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 because I could go for hours. So it's like 15 minutes is actually a really good format for me because it's like a discipline. Um, and the thing that I didn't get to in that is talking about twin flames or divine counterparts is that's a shepherd situation too. If you yes, are following, if you are following this person, this feeling, this connection that you have with them, and it's a synthetic connection, it's not a true one. Going off a cliff. <laughs> you are going to go off a cliff. I hate and to so say it, that, but I mean, I don't mean to laugh because it doesn't sound very compassionate, but you're talking to someone who's been off the cliff. So I'm yeah. laughing at myself, people. I'm not laughing at you, I promise. Okay, you're well, you're allowed to laugh I'm because you to laugh because I need to. Ball. I need to yeah. and I need some drinks in my hand while I'm doing it. <laughs> Go ahead. You were so you were saying. <laughs> yeah, well well it was just that I, I hadn't I hadn't had enough time to link those two things together, but that it rolls both of those videos together and brings us to like the divine counterpart twin flame situation and which is which is very much a an like Lisa Harrison says an inside job like it is a personal it looks like it's an outside thing but it's actually it's all about your own perspective and how how you're relating to yourself in this personal situation right and so it relates that that synthetic versus natural relates everywhere in your life and it's that's kind of the other thing I was trying to get across which we're going to dig into I know is oh yeah <laughs> how you how you spot the difference between synthetic and organic and it's a little bit like suck it and see like you have to actually get in there but the 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 caveat to that is we're already in here like we're in this place loaded up to the eyeballs with synthetic like that's for most people and for most of us the majority of our experiences have been that and if you think they haven't been you're very 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 special or <laughs> you haven't actually had much of a, a real natural experience because once you've had it, you spot the synthetic really quickly. Well, I picked up a couple things in that and I was thinking about, you know, I, I think that one of the reasons why, if I were to say, why have I done a really good job on this? And I feel like I really have done a good job on this because I've been doing this a long time and being very focused. I yeah. am super good at trying shit on. I have an open G center in um, human design, which means I can try it all on. Mm. Everything that's come along from the dinar to the Q to, to Trump to Ascended Masters to Galactics, you name it, I tried it on. Yeah. And what's interesting about that is, is you're right, you have to, this is a, this is almost like you have to feel your way along. You do. You do. It, but you then, have but to be see, blindfolded. And this is so important for us to understand because I think so many people don't know, like, how do we tell? And this is the stuff I've been dealing with and working with in, in how do we get in right relationship? So in terms of counterparts or in terms of of anything how do we do it you know i've been thinking about all this stuff 
We're feeling mm. our way along. What feels right and what feels wrong? And you know, I want to say it's like chakra systems. And what are some other things? The Kundalini uh, awakenings mm -hmm. and all yeah. of these things that all of these very spiritual people were talking about. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I don't feel any of that. Okay, no, I'm not traveling out of body. Okay, no, I'm not doing this, but I disparaged myself and I put myself down in my own mm -hmm. mind for a long time because I thought, remember how many times have I said that even in our calls and our conversations? I just, I don't have those mystical experiences that everyone else is having. Well, guess what? I am starting, mm -hmm. this is where I'm awakening to myself. Because what I'm understanding is, is that I've had to feel into all of these different areas of the new age community and religion community and twin flame community. And of course the family community and the work community and the money situation. I've been feeling into all of this for so long. And it's like, what feels right? And the things that never felt right to me, I didn't pay any attention to it. I didn't invest in it. Mm. And I think when you don't invest too deeply in something and you can tiptoe back out of it and you go, oh, that doesn't feel real to me. That doesn't yeah. feel authentic to me. Um, it is, It is. I'm just sharing my own personal experience because after you were talking about that video, I'm like, well, that's a really damn good question. <laughs> how do you, you know, how do you determine the natural? And I would say mm. you have to feel your way along. And you know, yeah. you and... Oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. You, um, it's because you can't, you can't tell by eye. It's like these videos of Kate, what's her name on, on the internet with oh, the right. AI and that, you know, she's Everywhere. been touching up her videos and it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. sure, I'm sure someone in that position actually like edits their own videos. I'm sure they haven't got a team doing it for <laughs> them. Like, ha ha. But, <laughs> but, but it's that like when you, mostly when you trust your eyes yeah they'll deceive you like because they're holographic and and like the, it's very easy to go and look up that information the eyes operate in a totally holographic way like that's how they receive the data the light the information and and how we transfer it and perceive it as far as they can work out is the eyes operate they're like a holographic camera it's like mm. two holographic cameras that overlay over the top of each other so Holograms are really tricky because you can like put your hand through them and they, they you know, they're there but they're not there. Mm -hmm. So it, we're we're already off to a pretty interesting start. And this was I might have mentioned this on one of our other videos, but it was a few years ago. I had this real sense of like it's like the Jedi training, right? Like, can you actually walk down the street with your eyes shut? And not bump into stuff, not bump into people. <laughs> and the street, yeah. your garden, whatever. But the street was really good for me. Like the top of the top of our town, before it gets busy, walking down this quiet bit of street where there were some closed shops and things, because you're not going to bump into anyone. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you shut your eyes and you have to feel your way, it's totally different. Yeah. Totally different. And then you stop when you're an energy worker and you do this stuff like to help people and for a living and because you're very interested in it, you suddenly feel into this part of the street and you're like, this is not what my eyes are showing me. Right. This feels, this doesn't feel like I'm standing in where my eyes tell me I'm standing is what I'm trying to say. You shut yeah. your eyes and it's like, I'm, I'm somewhere else. I'm yes. absolutely somewhere else. But when I open my eyes, it says there's the gutter. There's the footpath. There's the closed shops. Like, no, when I shut my eyes, that's not where I am at all. There's something else going on here. And mm -hmm. so it's that learning how to, and I mean, that's the the cliche, um, one of the cliche, cliche definitions of shaman is the person who knows how to walk in the dark or the person oh. that knows how to walk with a blindfold because right. you stop trusting your eyes and you start actually feeling what's going on. And you can feel the synthetic, like it is yes. like so obvious to feel, <laughs> but to look at it, you can't tell. It's really, you know, it, I, it's tricky. I want to jump in because there's something that you're saying right now that I just put together. It's like your eyes are the tool of the mind. Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought about that. It is, it, it, everyone is always like seeing is believing, right? 
I mean, didn't we've been told, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't believe it unless I see it with my own eyes. You know, how many times have people said that? But think yeah. about that. We've been taught that we mm. need to see it to believe it. Yeah. So, yep. and I want to throw in here at this point, the pineal gland. Uh-huh. Overlay. Uh -huh. It's just, just a different way Overlay of seeing. Overlay of the system. So we've got a bunch of some of these um, light worker way showers and everything that are really trusting that third oh, eye. Yeah. Trusting the movie camera in their head to show them all these visual pictures. Go ahead. I know you're going to say and, something about this. Well, well and, whether, and whether you want to say like there is an inner vision that's based there and there's an overlay over it, hijacking it like a synthetic lens or something, or whether you want to say the whole pineal gland was put there by aliens and it's terrible and we should try and get rid of it or, you know, whatever, wow. whatever, because it doesn't matter which way you want to go with that. That right. That's what I'm, I'm really coming to that. And I'm really stressing that with people is it doesn't matter whether you're on a prison, prison planet and it was totally just a setup and you had no way out and you don't even know why you're here and, or it's some sort of escape room and you came in here to try your luck to, to do push ups and, and test yourself to see how you're going to get out. And like one way you're a victim and one way you made the choice and it doesn't matter because you have to do the same damn thing to get out. Right. So you choose, right? I don't care. I don't care what you believe is what's going on. Mm -hmm. Pick, pick one or the other or, it's a or perspective. both. It's a perspective. It's, it's a, a way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, when you say seeing is believing, that that is absolutely true and just nails to the wall synthetic versus natural because belief is synthetic and knowing is natural. There you go. Because when you, when you know something, you know, but if you believe something, then you could disbelieve it. Exactly. But you, can't unknow, you can't unknow something once you know it. You know it, you know it. That's it. Full stop. Well, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to also expand on that. Is there are people, and I, and this is what I had written down a little while ago. What I think has happened, and tell me what you think. I think a lot of the people who we consider the light workers and the way showers and things of that. I think they were groomed. I think they were selected. I think from they were very, contacted from a very early age, if not many or lifetimes walk in Walk-ins yeah. is a really good one, right? And so oh. think about this. They know what they're saying is true. Why? Because they believe it strongly enough that they know they it. And that is, it. but but the thing is, is what's the difference between believing and knowing? If hmm. you're using that third eye, you got people that are talking to you, telling you the things, and you've, you believe it hook, line, and sinker. That mm -hmm. turns that person into thinking they really know. And when someone thinks they really know, it's no longer a belief. They yeah. think they know. And they that's they where know. we get into a little bit of, okay, are we going to follow this person off a cliff? Yeah. And, and also what we always say about getting into the heart is when you think you know, you're thinking. And, and this is hijacked. This whole thing... <clears throat> like it's separate from the body for a reason, right? It's really easy to hijack this whole module. You can hijack the the taste, the smell, the ears, the the vision, the thoughts. It's pretty tricky to hijack this though. Like well, even even the whole body. I'm but... gonna argue with you there because yeah. there's the bliss, love and light bullshit that they can hard. project. That's not heart. I know it's though. not heart, but people can think it is because it feels good. It yeah, feels yeah, yeah. the way you think love is going to feel. So mm. you think, oh, I am only contacted by the highest love and light. And then they're high as a kite the whole time <laughs> they're talking. And so my, my caveat to that is that's not heart. That's, that's soul. Oh, I know. But see, that's they Wilson. don't. Again, yeah. that's what I'm saying. What we're dealing yeah. with, I think, here are people that honestly really believe and know and feel the light and the heart. And mm. those people are a hundred percent sure. And they're the ones that are continuing to put out the content and continuing to say the same things. And usually yep. people who will tell you how gifted they are. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, usually. And they tell you and, how gifted they are. 
and from where I'm sitting, I look at a lot of them and and I say, are they are they even real people? <laughs> like that's from my perspective. I'm like, but I know I know some of them. Like I know yeah, some people. Me too. Like that. But I also know people who have been like that. They were right into that. And then the real world came up and knocked them in the back of the head, like real love, like true love, like oh, actual heart, like right. what goes on in your and actual it, heart. Did it wake them up? And it, and it clicks and suddenly they're like, "Yeah, I can't believe I was buying all that bullshit before and right. actually spouting it. And and when you when oh, you talk about... I've been oh, there, so I don't, please, I'm not throwing, yeah, I'm no, not throwing no dirt balls at anyone. I'm, I've been there, totally. I've been in that community. Right. We're talking to an flame community, right? So yeah. please yeah. don't misunderstand. I don't want to come across like I'm, you know, but what I'm trying to, we're trying to get at something here is how do we find the authentic when there's so much of the synthetic? Yeah. There's so much mimic. Go ahead. Yeah. And well, and like, you know, I was listening to a guy the other day and he was, he was talking, he's very big in the Steiner community. So they're all about Christ energies and then Luciferic and Saturnian, they call it Ariman, not Saturn or Satan, but mm -hmm. so they're very in these, um, can't even think of the name, but these, these kind of energies, these big characters. They're oh, playing you're talking them. about the deities, the, the, the God yeah, realm, the, the kind deities, of thing. the God realm. Yeah. That's the kind of thing. And he, he said something, and this is going to talk to a lot of what we've just talked about, like shepherds, pineal gland, vision, holographic synthetic overlays, the whole works. He's talking about going into that, that place where you start to feel the entities and the nature spirits and the things around you. Like you, you start right. to know what's going on here. Like there's actually stuff here that's not material at all. Right. And you're going into these, and they call them realms, right? So yeah, you're actually, unseen. you're, yeah, you're spreading yourself into unseen realms because our our sight, our band of sight is quite narrow compared to even the known light spectrum, let alone what the unknown light spectrum is. Right. So he's talking about people getting into this kind of zone, and that this is the most dangerous time to be a human is getting into these zones because the beings that hang out here are quite deceptive and i'm just like ding 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 you're ringing my bell like these things will <laughs> pretend to be yeah you they'll pretend to this. be your yeah, yeah they'll pretend to be your dad they'll pretend to be your dead grandpa they'll pretend to be archangel michael they'll pretend to be and the, and so right. and he dropped he dropped his clanger for their whole community was like you know even people in the community that he's talking about the steiner community and the christian community he said, I really believe that a lot of people, like more than 90% of the people who say that they're talking to Jesus are not talking to Jesus yeah. at all. Like they're talking to something. They believe complete. it's Jesus. They believe, but yeah. a lot of that is because they're getting love blessed. They, yeah, they, and, will get, and, they can stimulate your nervous system to feel that feeling of love and acceptance, but it's synthetic. And they front, and they front loaded you because they front loaded you with these books, these right. biblical books, and then the interpretation through your church of those biblical books. And that interpretation leads you to feel that Jesus is this certain character or in energy the play, or whatever, which is quite, yeah, which is quite a small bandwidth of this is what G because a lot of other people got go to an Orthodox church and they got a totally different view about this guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's so the way this is, God too. God too. Yeah, I mean, you can totally. have the you can have the judgmental. Yeah. yeah, all of them, all of them. But this the this raffle. works for galactics. Yeah, this yeah, works yeah. for twin flames. This works for everything. So yeah. someone's giving you a really traps. narrow idea of what this particular unseen energy, how it's going to present itself to you. Mm -hmm. Now these things in this unseen realm. They can read us like books, like particularly <laughs> our emotions, right? They can read us so clearly. Mm -hmm. So they just like scan you and go, oh, you're looking for that. Great. They That's know exactly it. where your weaknesses are. You, they can they can scan you. They know what your past hurts are. They know what your weaknesses, like they're kryptonite. Yep. I'm not going to so admit my kryptonites, <laughs> but they, they had it really well when it came to Twin Flames. Gotcha. Yeah. Hook, line, and yeah. sinker. Yeah, totally, so, totally. That's so and and, and then right. make sure that you know that they <laughs> this this fault the perfect false twin flame to get in your blind spot 
is put right in front of you and then it, and then and on it goes and so it's just this shepherd situation of when you're looking for something the problem is if someone might create exactly the thing you're looking for right. synthetically and yes. then pop it in front of you and if you don't have a good barometer between synthetic and natural which is really hard because if you haven't had a lot of exposure to not to one or the other but the differential between the two and done some real digging into it you're not going to know you're going to be going quite a way down the road before you realize and you might never realize that the being you're talking to the being you're channeling you've got a you've got a channel that's got hundreds of thousands of subscribers you're up on stage channeling this stuff and everyone's 95 adoring you percent of it. <laughs> everyone's yeah, adoring yeah, you not, oh you're so wonderful they, everyone the loves god you you're, you're helping them the god you're realm healing them. they become deities yeah. and they totally. were played specifically because that was a sensitivity for them they want uh -huh. to be special yeah yeah, so yeah, guess yeah, what? yeah. Here you go. Let me deliver it to you. And by yeah. the way, we're going to use our algorithms to make sure you get 200,000 video likes. And, yeah. and people like Hamish and Debbie, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> and like, we're I not like saying conversations, but you know, we're not, we're not saying AI. we should have <laughs> hundreds of thousands of followers. No, I wouldn't want this stuff. That many. Or, I don't want but, but there's this, there's funny. this gross manipulation that goes on yeah. with people where there's this thing that people really want. And, my my thing is I deliberately won't give people what they want deliberately yeah absolutely deliberately because I'm like no 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 what right. you want is in you and there's nothing I can give you and if I give you the thing you want it's probably it's just about synthetic anyway like because it's yeah. mine not yours like right. I can show you I can help you to find the thing in you might be fast might be slow mm -hmm. but I'm not going to give you the thing that you want because that is the pathway Dis to the demigod. It's disempowerment. Totally. And it's totally. creating you into a deity and, yeah, putting them in a disempowered state. Yep. And I Which guess, makes me synthetic all of a sudden. Right. And I, and I think that that's, you know, anyone that's listening to this, I think that's an easy way to discern when you're listening to people on YouTube having, you know, like, if the people are are disempowering in any way by putting themselves in the place of expert or talking like an expert or talking like I'm the teacher and you're the student mm -hmm. or mm. in my community, we do this and this is how we all do it. I mean, yep. really, that's, a, that's what a shepherd conversation is. And listen, I, there's something that I want to throw in here right now. There are two sides to this. It's all experience. This is a game. Totally. And if you totally. are like me and you've, I don't know, as I've never, I've never really, well, okay, I've fallen for some shepherds. I guess I fell in the twin flame. I didn't. I didn't. I'm going to say that. I didn't completely fall. But what I'm saying is, is that we all have our experiences and that's what they are. So, yeah. but if you're someone who says, you know, I want to learn to discern this better because I've wasted a lot of time going mm. here and doing this and it feels like a waste of time and it feels mm. like it feels like it did me damage mm. um a way to consider thinking of moving forward in that is just to really tune in and feel into these different videos just yeah. you know that's the inner being right there you're listening to a video i can tell you in 15 seconds if that video is for me or not i just feel into the tone of the person's voice i hear a sentence or two and i'm like oh yeah no this is a shepherd they want me to follow them bye i'm going yeah. but yeah. if it's conversation and it's sharing their own personal experiences and they're open and vulnerable with you and they're and they're saying it like it is and they're saying hey, you know, share your stories with me or let's just, you know, like figure this out together. We're on the road together. That's different. Yeah. What do you totally think, different. Hamish? Am I? Yeah, I, I agree with that. that. That's totally different. When when someone's saying this is the way it is or this is what we should do or they're really giving you the inside scoop on on how it is and what's coming up and and what you should do and it's like, there's nothing wrong with listening to those people. Just mm -hmm. don't follow them blindly because they're going to have good data. They've always got good. They, they can't use lies. It. 
they're, they're giving they, you they something they're, they're getting, something. right? Oh, yeah, somewhere. they're always giving yeah. you the good stuff. Yeah. What they usually do is lie, they lie by omission. Right. They leave they leave very specific things out, and those specific things they leave out are the bits that would empower you rather than them. Right. And because that isn't there, then you're like, oh, I'm nearly... I'm nearly there. I've almost got the keys to the kingdom, but I haven't quite worked it out yet. So I'll have to watch their next video. I'll have to right. go to their conference the donor. I'll have I've to go to join. Byron Bay and join their group. And, I, and it's like, no, 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 no. Right. And, and really, the I mean, I was talking to someone a few days ago, a, a musician. She's a fantastic musician. Mm -hmm. She's an accompanist, actually. Okay. So she's totally open because to be a really good accompanist, mm -hmm. you've got to be able to follow what the other person's doing, but you've also got to almost be a better musician than the other person is. Sure. Because you've got to be totally open to follow them because you're the accompanist, you're not the soloist. But then when it, if it starts to go a bit off track, you've got to be able to know it's going off track and pull the reins in a bit to, you know, they're slowing down a bit there, that's a great flourish. Oh, no, they're slowing down a bit there. It's not meant to slow down there. I'll push it a bit to hold mm -hmm. the tempo. Mm -hmm. Like you've got to, you've got to be totally open and assessing and and letting the other person lead, but also you're backing the whole thing up and you're holding it all together. Mm -hmm. And and it was this this idea of that that kind of thing of of being being so open and being so accessible, but not letting the thing trample over the top of you mm -hmm. at the same time. You're totally, you're totally solid. So you, you're with these people. You're accessing this information that they're giving you and you're in the group and you're here and you're there. But when they tell you to jump off the cliff, you're not jumping. Right. Like, because you're always assessing, well, That's when the they do something wrong, my job is to, to actually hold all of this together until they get it back together and then they'll, you know, they'll carry on again. So it's kind of looking at it from that point of view of going, well, these, these, people these groups are everywhere they're they're gatekeepers in a way to stop you from getting out of the enclosure um you think you're out but you're actually not because you're in their own little enclosure yeah um but it's we're, we're not saying you know don't listen to it mm -hmm. and run away from them and right. we're just saying you're never going to be given the whole story so know that and just look at the person and saying are they are they empowering me or are they empowering themselves or, or the group that I need to be a part of or something behind them? You I know, was, that's what I was going to jump in with, uh, the power behind them. Because, I mean, what I've really come to know is that we do have galactic families and there oh. are galactic roots and experiences that we've had as our own, as our fractal. Um, yeah. But a lot of these... A lot of these people who, un, I really believe so many of them are just unknowing. They really, it's like everything they're saying sounds really good, but then all of a sudden it's, but give your energy to God or give your energy to source or, yeah. or make sure you call on this or I'm going to yeah. channel so-and-so now. Yeah. And the moment that stuff starts coming in, those are red flags. It doesn't mean that you take the baby and throw it away out of the bathwater. What's that? Throw the yeah. baby out yeah, with the bathwater? You yeah. don't necessarily need to do that, but it's a discernment. And I think that right now, at least what I'm feeling, and you guys can all determine for yourselves what you're feeling, but it seems for me personally, I'm on a discernment walk continually walking mm. through and discerning everything consciously yeah. that's consciousness yeah and i want to know in the comments how many of you are feeling that too like are you feeling that discernment is something that you're really working on um during this uh, and i'm calling it it's like a hermit period what would you i mean this is crazy how like withdrawn or individual what is the word yeah. that i'm looking for here yeah it, it's very individual and and this is the other reason why i work the way i work and i know you work the way you work with self-empowerment with the people you're working with 
and yourself is because it can only ever be individual yeah ever like yeah. you you can't you there's nothing you can do to help someone else or yourself or get us all out of here or get the bad people out of here so we can be here without the overlay or whatever you're looking for like whatever the mm-hmm. whatever the story is that mm-hmm. you've got you're not going to do that anywhere but on an individual level it's true. so so 500,000 followers, 3 million followers, it doesn't matter if you can't connect with one person and really help them on an individual level, what you're doing is pointless. Well, and and the thing is, is that you can try to help them on an individual level, but ultimately it's the person that you're trying to help's decision yeah. as to really implementing anything anyways. Absolutely. Um, helping when, when you're helping someone, you're helping them to help themselves. Exactly. You're, you're, you're giving them, I see it, I see it like um, if you were, if, if we were all in vehicles driving along, you know, they're in, they're in a vehicle that's driving along and the air in front of them is not clear. It's all dusty. It's right. all, there's stuff in it that, and it's, it's like you pull across in front of them and you clean the air up. You give them some clear air. You mm-hmm. create a bit of slipstream for them. You say, get in behind me. Here's a bit of slipstream. Now, while we're in here, let's clean the windscreen up and let's see if we can get a bit of air back in the tires and check the oil level while we're at it and just get that whole thing sorted out a bit. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to pull across again. Like, because, you know, the session finishes an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, the session finishes. Hey, and you and I, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you and I pull into the other lane and they're back yeah. in, like, they're back in the wind blast again. Yeah. And it's still full on. The pain comes back. This comes back. That comes back. It, you know, it's still quite full on, but it's better than it was, right. hopefully. And then it's like, oh well, this is better, but I'm still in a bit of a okay. Pull across and give them the slipstream effect again. Right. Oh yeah, that's that's where I want to be. Great. Let's get it all sorted out. And it, but you're going to have to work in how to do this on your own because I can't slipstream everyone. Right. And I mean, I don't want to, that's not the way out. I can, but I can give you some clear air. I can give you breathing space. And that I know that's how you work as well. Well, I was going to say you do that on a physical basis. And for me, a lot of mine is the mind virus and literally mm. just, just sometimes showing different perspectives. Yeah. If, if you can yeah. get someone to change a perspective, to feel into a situation and change their perspective, which is just their automatic assumptions about what's going on. I mean, mm. people just slap stories over stuff. They just do. They feel a certain way. And I'm just going to slap this story on it, whether it's helpful for them or not. And mm. sometimes it's just, hey, how can I identify what some other possible stories are we can tell ourselves? Because they're all stories. But at least tell yeah, yourself cool. one that empowers you yeah. and once you yeah for me for me everything that i'm doing and everything that i'm focused on within myself and any experiences i have with clients or just my very dearest friends and family is all about how can you be empowered how can you mm-hmm. have the steering wheel what are things that are stopping you from um being in right relationship, which is the next topic I wanted to talk about. Is it a good time yeah, okay. to switch to that topic? Yeah, let's switch to that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And and the segue between those two is is the the natural and the synthetic of like giving people the steering wheel of their own life and saying like I can't drive it for you, I can't tow you around like a tow truck. Mm-hmm. Even if I could, that's not the way to do it. Right. But then they're like, well, but. I can't tell the difference between synthetic and natural. It's like, that's right. That's why we keep giving different perspectives on things. That's why we right. keep doing stuff to say, this is synthetic. It's like the, it's like the AI teaching itself. Like how many, how many of these squares have bicycles in them? You know, it, oh, it, God, it's I hate literally, that. <laughs> but it's literally that is it's like saying, it is. this is absolutely synthetic. Right. This is natural. Right. Here's, here's the difference. Here's the difference. Here's the difference. Now, now look at it from this way. Now look at it from that way. So it's like it's building your discernment library. And so, feel into it. 
I mean, a yeah. lot of times I'll just go, put your hand on your heart. What does your heart yeah. tell you? You know about the situation. That's a big yeah. one. It's like, put your <laughs> hand on your heart and say, what do I know? Because you know a hell of a lot more than you think you do. And start writing a list of the things that you know. Like yeah, your everyone. mind will tell you all this bullshit and you got to mm. figure out what is bullshit. Well, I'll tell you what's bullshit. Go in, write down what you know, and then say, yep. oh, wow, that doesn't even equate at all with what my brain's telling me. And yep. there you go. Yep. And we could be pulling apart. We could be pulling apart esoteric books. We could be pulling apart movies in these discussions. <laughs> we could be doing all of that stuff that people do that everyone loves to. I mean, I love watching that stuff. Are you really yeah. dig into that stuff? And that's great. It's great. This loves it, right? Oh, it's yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. It's all bullshit. It None of it is busy. going to help you. Yeah. yeah not, but, but this, like going here and actually going, oh no, not the, not the bliss bomb, not the, yeah. I feel this is, I'm, I'm getting just like, ah, oh, no, not that. No, no, no. no. All the way in here. Knowing and then, something. Yeah. Knowing yeah, yeah, yeah. something that to me, that feels like authentic love. When you yeah. know something, it's like, ah, oh, it just feels so good. Oh, I yeah. know and, this. And you know feel so secure. Much. <laughs> it's you like, know so much. Yes, like you when do. you really get in there yes. and ask an intelligent question, it turns out that you know pretty much damn near anything you want to ask a question on, you know. Well, you just tell that to my family because they used to call me a know-it-all. Mom thinks she knows everything. It's like, but I do know everything. <laughs> <laughs> because I always, I guess I really always went into my heart to know stuff. And yeah. I didn't even know I was doing it. So those are kind of the fun things to discover too. You know, I had it in my brain that I'm a smart aleck know-it-all instead of realizing, wait a minute, no, when someone's sick, I, I go into my knowing and I'm like, oh, this is what it feels right to you to do. And that's mm -hmm. me just accessing whatever information in the field is available to us. So, yeah. Um. Was there something else that you wanted to say before you move into right relationship? No, right, sure? because because that's the segue into right relationship because all of that other stuff is just candy for the brain to keep yourself busy. But correct relationship, that's where the rubber meets the road. And I had a brilliant, I'm going to say it, this was a brilliant discovery for myself when I was, and this is, again, this is the deep work that I've been doing and so what I'm doing is I'm just sharing it and seeing if anyone really can relate to it. Um, first of all, I have started to realize that everything in our world and how we perceive it is based on the relationship we have to ourself about that, whatever it is, fill in the blank. So yep. money, I'm gonna experience money, not based on my relationship with money, based on my relationship of how I feel about money. Yep. What's my relationship with money? Mm -hmm. So I started to realize that um, I, I had this, uh, there is this video that I saw and we, you know, we're always talking about how to get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, how do we, how do we get to that space where we're calibrated enough to, I don't know, George Kavasilis uh, talks about a sun and you're the sun and you're, you go inside of yourself to turn inside out because you're the universe. So you go in and you turn inside out and become the sun. So I'm thinking, okay, if that's the ultimate destination, I don't care if we all go together. I don't care if I go tomorrow and leave the rest behind. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But the, but the achievement of it is that turning inside out and and what's the key to that, right? We've been talking about this for nine months together about like what or more. And yeah. uh, so I saw a video and, and it got me just really activated. And I started realizing it's, it's about right relationship because it, in right relationship is the natural versus the synthetic. It's the, it's the absolute natural over the mimic of the natural or the overlays. And here we've been talking about how to tell the difference. Well, I started realizing something did click for me, you guys, within the last, I don't know, the eclipse, right before the eclipse, um, where all of a sudden I've become very aware of my connection, my relationships to stuff. Like mm. all of a sudden, I know when I'm in right relationship to stuff, 
that used to really be, er, you know, like, oh shit, because I'd get triggered. I was getting triggered Le left, right, and center. And when you get triggered, that's a pretty good indication of what you're not in right relationship with, with yourself. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. if, and, but when you start getting in right relationship, you don't get triggered. And I kept going, why am I not getting triggered at that? That's not bothering me. And that would normally drive me crazy. Whether it's whether it's money and sales not coming in and, you know, it's the relationship. How do I feel about money? Right. My relationship with money. Well, if you don't have a good relationship with money inside yourself, not with money, mm -hmm. but it, if you don't yeah. have a good relationship with yourself about money, like mm -hmm. I feel good about money, I have good, you know, then you can't manifest it. So I started realizing the very significant um, association there is between really being able to dive inside and and turn inside out is we're looking for the natural we're yeah. looking for the real stuff we're looking mm. to get away from the synthetic and it's inside us so while all these people are talking about what's going on out here in the world oh there's a war breaking out in the Middle East Okay, so this shit's been going on forever. What's going on inside of your universe? Right here. Yeah. Are you yeah. at war with yourself? Who cares yeah. about the world? So this is kind of where I've been playing. Well, yeah. the very significant thing that I started to understand was, is of course, anyone that's followed my work has known that I've done stuff with counterparts, sacred counterparts, twin flames and all that. So my path has been very relationship oriented and they knew it. So they, you know, they, <laughs> they yeah. messed with me quite a bit over relationships. But I started to realize two things. Number one, getting in right relationship within yourself to a counterpart, like mm -hmm. how you feel within yourself, which I guess you would consider that the balancing, the feminine and masculine inside of yourself or or doing all of your work inside of yourself, or it's what enables you to manifest that physical expression of that counterpart. Mm. And trust me, if you don't have it inside of you, it's very hard to manifest. It, it, it ain't gonna happen. It's kind of like you said, Hamish. You know, you can't you can't just be given this. It's no. something that is a reflection of the right state of relationship. And the mm. second thing I wanted to say is that anyone who has um, followed Athena's work, there are a lot of people, those of us that have followed Athena are also very interested in what George Kavasilis has to say, because it's a very similar thing. But Hamish and I talk about very similar stuff to that, maybe with different, we both you know, see things, we all see things a little bit differently than each other. But one of the things that Athena talked about was that when we first came in, to what George Kavasilis would call is the great arena, the grand arena from the higher, mm. from the higher planes of existence where we kind of could make the decision as to whether or not you want to go in. Like Hamish, why didn't we just say, no, we're not going. <laughs> but anyway, so we, we don't, we don't head first and said, here we come. Right. Yeah. But, but when you, but, um, I remember Athena was talking about the pond of tears. And the pond of tears was when you came into the universe, when you first decided to sign up for the game, you merged your field with the universal being of light. So you have the source field, you, the source mm. field connection. So you're co-creators. And mm. then yeah. you also create, you also created that same, now a third with a counterpart. So there was not going to be any other energies out there that felt that same way. It's just like you're co-creating with that person, like you're co-creating with the cre creator of the universe or the universal being. So, yep. so the pond of tears was specifically about, okay, it's time to incarnate into this compression, the sucky compression. <laughs> First, you're going to forget the counterpart. This was in the pond of tears. They call it the pond of tears because everyone cried their eyes out. I've been there in a meditation. I did cry my eyes out. But the even sadder part of it is we had to kind of forget ourselves. And so yeah. I am not surprised in coming full circle in this quickening to where we're going to return to that state of being is first we find ourselves, then mm. we find that counterpart or we, yeah. we it's, it's established. So that was one of my big, I don't know, aha moments 
over the last couple of weeks and it's just been a recent thing and mm. um and so that made me understand right relationship is with everything it's not just with counterparts and different people are getting in right relationships with tons of different things but they're looking yeah. for the natural all right now that yeah. i've talked for long enough you want to go you tell me you weren't just dying to jump in and you just said that's all great that's all great debbie we'll just leave it at that um no 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 <laughs> i know you're gonna that, say something there's some there's some stuff in there some great stuff in there because it's got lots of bits that um people don't like to hear there's some mm. stuff in there people don't like to hear like if you and i got on a, a group or a talk like this or whatever and said look listen you're never going to find your counterpart until you find yourself oh that's true <laughs> uh oh i just lost a bunch of viewers on my channel <laughs> they all, they've, they've gone they've gone oh, looking shit. for someone else like that's they don't okay. want to hear that i'm being honest subscribers I'm we're bleeding honest. subscribers on the edges <laughs> i but, don't care it's not about but no one wants doing to hear that i know like no one wants no one we're wants having, to hear that we're having the conversation about it because there's more to be said so keep going is, don't leave yet said. people we got something more to no. say okay go no, ahead don't leave yet so so how i would actually frame that so that you didn't always just jump out the window and run away would yeah. be the the relationship that you're in whether it's a counterpart relationship or a twin flame relationship as is a, like a synthetic one whether it's synthetic or natural or it has the potential to be natural but it's got all these synthetic overlays in there on you and on the other person mm -hmm. Your the whole the whole aim is to find yourself again. Like that's that's the whole Thank aim. You. And you're yes. not going to find you're not going to find that counterpart or God or the creator or until you actually find yourself. Now there's two ways to find yourself. Like there are two methods to this. These are the two Buddhist paths, right? That there's a reason why there are two main Buddhist paths. One is you work completely outside of yourself in service to everybody and every other thing else around you service and to through self. that yeah and i mean through service that, to others sorry well, yeah service to others <laughs> like as in as in out service to others right. and in doing that you'll find yourself and uh -huh. the other part is you go completely internal like you go into the monastery and it's all kind of cloistered and you're just doing what you but it's a totally internal path Mm. And through finding yourself in that internal path, then that ripples out into everyone else around you because it always does. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really like the idea that you haven't found yourself, but you're in this relationship with someone. How does that, you know, well, do I just walk away from it then? It's like, no, 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 no. no. Because it's what it's going path. to do, well, and it's going to show you who you're not. Mm -hmm. Like you can find your... You can use this relationship to find yourself. Like you said, what's triggering me? Ah, oh, there's a weak spot. There's a blind spot. There's a, like, do do the work. Use the relationship. Use the job. Use the whatever you're in. Like, you've woken up to the game. You've gone, oh, wow. The relationship it's, with whatever it is. Yeah, use that what, for. Whatever it is, because... Right. The reason it works is because the relationship with whatever it is is your relationship to whatever it is. And so stop looking at blaming the thing out there, the the partner, the job, the prison planet, the whatever. Stop blaming that for everything that's going wrong and actually turn the responsibility back on yourself and go, so how do I optimize this? Like, mm -hmm. this is shitty. How do I optimize it? How am I going to make myself better through this? Because if I can make myself better through this, then this thing's going to turn into something else or I'm going to get out of it and get into something better or whatever it is. But when you when you actually flip the and and it's the worst thing in the world to say you gave yourself the cancer. Right. Oh. Who wants to say that to someone? No, like, nah. But if you say the smoking, the sun, the whatever they want to blame it on, right? That gave you the cancer, then you are a powerless victim. Exactly. You have there's nothing you can do about it. But if you say your relationship, you, whatever story with your you health. want, with your health, yeah, with your 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 <laughs> genetic relationship, your emotional relationship, your whatever, but your relationship to this particular thing 
is why you now have a cancer cascade in your body. If you can augment or change that relationship, won't that change the cancer? You're damn yeah. straight it will. Because it's just like, a reflection. It's a relationship. And so when you can get actually. into... Yeah. yeah. And and does it mean you don't die? I don't know. I, I don't know. Depends Maybe not. on your life Maybe path. Maybe it's too far along and and the you you saw the signpost too late and the body's too far down the road maybe you do maybe you saw it soon enough or maybe a miracle happens and and within overnight everything goes away in it but it that actually is immaterial right you can never you can never ever ever focus on the outcome to get what you want it just doesn't work that way you can't say well this is what i'm aiming for or this is what i no you it's got to be like as if that's already happened and you're back at your relationship to the thing. Like I'm already in perfect health. What's my relationship to that? Like, right. Well, you, because that's the only way you're ever going to get any leverage in here, whether, and it, it's the same old game again, like whether you want to call it a, a hijacked overlay, a prison planet or a university, mm -hmm. it all comes down to the same thing. You, you are invited to check, your relationship with what's going on and that it's your responsibility, but no one's going to say it's your fault. I'm not going to say your relationship with money or with relationships with people, that's not your fault because that came from your schooling, your family, your genetic lineage, what stories you were told when you brought up, what movies you gravitated towards. Like This is not your fault, but you are the only person who can change it. Well, and it's the only thing it, it what it is, is it's it's the thing that you need to go into yourself. It's a situation that will force you to go inward. If you're going to do that, go inward and find out something inside of you that needs to shift. It needs yeah. to transform. And so totally. you have to go in and look at the relationship you're having with different things that are manifesting that projection or that outcome That's because the reason why people's lives fall apart when they start to do this sort of work mm -hmm. is because those things in your life that are about to fall apart they're the reason why you're in the hole that you're in right and so you're not going to get out of the abusive relationship the cancer the bankruptcy the you're not going to get out of any of that thing. until you yeah. until you demolish the framework of your life that caused that that, you, that caused it yep. yeah and so of course your life has to fall apart to some extent because living your life the way you lived it led you to where you are that's what and manifested that's saying, it right exactly yeah, and that's the bit of saying well so you're saying it's all my fault and i'm like no i'm not saying it's all your fault but i'm saying those choices and those influences got you here so you're not going to get out of it by continuing to do that. Right. You have to make some new choices by going in and yep. looking inside at what the things are that caused you to make the decisions that you made in the first place. That's the transformation that takes place. Because a lot of those choices probably aren't conscious. Oh, they're gosh, no. Some, they're That's, subconscious. They're unconscious. They're, they're programs. They're, they're inserts. Traumas. They're hacks. Yep. Sometimes yep. people have hacked you. Oh, I yeah. mean, oh my gosh, Income. doesn't that explain, like, we, uh, when I first met Hamish, of course, anyone that's seen it, our videos knows that, you know, he found all kinds of contraptions on my family. They were shut <laughs> down, man. They were totally yeah. shut down with technology all layered all over them. Now, if I just looked at him and said, well, this person's that and this person's that and, and everything else, that would be just such a surface judgment. Yeah. But we don't realize just how fucked with we are. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, we have how, been so disempowered. With. Yeah, go ahead. Everyone around us, how fucked with is everyone around us. us as well. Like, it's fun it's land. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fun land. They're going to go after your family. They're going to go after your pets. They're going to go after your colleagues at work. They're going to like, it's just, and, and then you That's start seeing like, yeah, they're kind of, there are only 36 characters in here. Like there, and so... And so if character number seven in your life is fucked mm -hmm. with, anywhere you find character number seven, they're going to experience, they're going to be exhibiting the same traits. Like it's your son. It's also the, the second person you work for for your job. It's True. also your great grandmother who died when you were six. 
It's also your your second boyfriend that you had. Is it all and of them? You're absolutely right about that. Oh my gosh! And if you don't oh. deal with that, you're gonna yeah. keep. You're gonna and you're gonna experience it again and again. And you can't oh. change them. So all you can change, unless they're like a close family member, and then you can get someone to like work on them and pull some of the shit off, and that might help a bit mm -hmm. to let you see what not not to get them to behave the way you want them to behave, but then you can see who they really are and go, oh. And you can get in right I relationship. Know how to get in the relationship with them, exactly. Well, and, and there's something to that. Let me see if I can voice this. This really isn't even about your relationship to them. It's about your relationship with yourself about that. So about I want to give an example. Yep. I want to give a really good example. All right, my daughter and I, she's my mini me, she's 26. I love her dearly. She was very difficult to raise because she was like me. <laughs> and I got it all back, you know how that goes. But yeah. I remember we were struggling for a number of years. And, um, and it was just fights and oh, every time we'd go get a margarita and then blah, 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 we'd start, right? And it was always the same thing. Until I realized this is really about how I feel like a mother. I feel like what is, why do I go into this space? What, what triggers me? And it mm. really boiled down to is me just thinking I wasn't a good enough mom. You know, if it really just, let's just boil it down to the basics. Yeah. And she would reflect that to me. Well, you're not a very good mother, blah, 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 right? That's how we that's figured good. it out. That's so, the job. Yeah, that's, that's her job to show me. So yeah. one day... I had been thinking about this a lot and I realized I'm a damn good mom. I was watching some videos and I, I, I was watching myself because I was, it was a long time ago, right? So you don't remember, but I'm looking and I'm going, I was a fucking excellent mom. What am I saying, right? Maybe I made some mistakes. Maybe I had some things happen. And, and when I got right with myself about being a mom and then mm. we got into our little tiff, she started in and I said, you know, I said, I've been thinking a lot about this. And I think looking back on it, I've made mistakes for sure. But I really was a great mom. I did this, 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 this. Now, do you have feelings you need to resolve? Yes, you obviously do. And I think you need to go talk to someone to resolve those issues. And mm. I'm not going to invalidate your feelings, but I'm going to tell you to go work them out because yeah. I'm at peace with the mother that I was and I have compassion that you feel that there were things that I did that weren't 100% the way you wanted them. Mm. What was really interesting is she just stopped. There was nowhere for that fight to go. It was just like, it just discharged everything. And all the air out of the room. <laughs> it did. And what's so interesting is she did go talk to someone and she still sees this person on a regular basis for her life. Do you know that she probably only talked about me for like one or two weeks and then the rest of it has been, you know, my boyfriend and my job and all this. So she yeah. actually transform the relationship. So that's what I'm talking about. A very specific example about how we have to get right with ourselves in that yeah. role yeah. that we're playing. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, when yeah. you a get, lot of us, and of that's you, how you yeah. transform. Exactly. Cause a lot of us have got the, these roles and, and those of us who are a bit older, right? We have had multiple roles. Like I am a son. Yeah. I am a brother. I am an uncle. I'm a cousin, Right. I'm a nephew, I'm a husband, I'm a work colleague, I'm a business manager, I'm a boss, I'm a healer. I've got so many hats that I can yeah. put on and none of them are me. None of them are me. Like I am the one that puts the hats on. Right? But you have well, a relationship with yourself with how you show up as that. What, well, and there's a story that I've... Uh, and how it starts is there's a story that your parents and your family around you tells you about yourself right. and you load you load this story you're looking at the old photographs and oh yeah remember when this and you're three years old and you can't remember a damn thing but they're telling you what you did and how you did it and you're mm -hmm. always like this as a child you're always like that you load you load this personality in as a child for some more than others right mm -hmm. but this you get told who you are and 
and a lot of a lot, a lot of times it doesn't match like it doesn't you're like i don't really feel like i am that but it kind of that feels all right okay i'll go along with it and then you you go in and you and then you're like well i know who i am i know who i am as a husband i know who i am as a partner i know who i am as a lover i know who i am as a boss i and you build these personas up mm-hmm. but these personas have got like they've got some baggage man they've yeah, got some they weight. do <laughs> like They've got they're they're fucking they're not great. They're like, loaded persona, with programs so loaded. of what yeah yeah. <laughs> they're so loaded and and it's a it's about being able to step out from underneath all of those and go. Who am I? <laughs> who am I? If <laughs> if I can observe yeah no but it's perfect right it's perfect if I can observe every single one of those roles then obviously I'm not those roles I'm the person who plays those roles not even the person I'm the being. Mm-hmm. And the existence behind those roles, who's that? What, right. What's that? Because that being doesn't have any hang-ups for the most part. Like, y- you won't find them. You can go looking, they're not going to be there, right? That being that being is not hung up about its mother. That being does not have a beef with his sister. That beef is not still replaying the thing from high school. Yeah. That, he, that being doesn't give a shit about any of that stuff. It's way past all of that. And you yeah. are still here playing out these things that have an emotional response that then have a physical response that then have an outward response in your life and it's all bullshit all of it's bullshit so i can't tell you who you are but i can tell you who you're not you're not any of those things and so all the problems all the issues all the blind spots all the chinks in the armor they're not yours either Mm -hmm. just walk away from them like imagine if you showed up in the room and you're meant to put on business manager hat or illicit lover hat or mother hat and you show up in the room and you're just you. Right. What what how's the conversation gonna go then? But that's well, an interesting You just hit the nail on the head with something that just dawned on me in this conversation, which is why I love our conversations. As all right, as your inner being Think of it as a seed inside of you. It's a yep. fractal. It's a fractal, meaning it's an entire, entire part of yeah. you no. as a creator being. That, not a fragment. A not fractal. a fract. It's a fractal, which means a whole yep. entire piece. It's not an aspect. In yep. this lifetime, if you're here, you're fractal. If mm. you're, if you're, if you're, I don't know. I can't, I can't make that blanket statement. I'm not going to act like I know everything because I don't. Yeah. But, but what I you're know. saying is you are. What you're I know. Is you. Thank you. Yeah. That's the best way to say it. I am a fractal, and inside of me has been a seed of that fractal. Yeah. And now the yeah. tree and this ascension, awakening, quickening, whatever you want to call it, the seed's been growing. Yeah. And so there's specific times where there's growth spurts. And I know yeah. that very specifically, I had one March 6th, 2022 very specifically it wasn't a walk-in it was me but i grew like the tree just grew a couple rings really quickly yeah when that starts to happen it changes your relationship with all of those things because you become that person that doesn't really care about that stuff does that make sense that's what i'm starting to see so when i told you this week that i felt like something clicked in with me I had another significant growth in that seed. And what I guess I'm trying to postulate a hypothesis, did I say that right? Mm. I would like to propose, and, and everyone that's watching this video, think about this in relationship to everybody that I know that we're, that watches our videos is gonna identify with the fact that your inner being is getting stronger inside of you one way or another. Yep. I want to know if you get those two where it's a significant growth in a period of time. I just experienced another one of them. And when that happened, everything went into right relationship because of exactly what you said. And I did not understand until you said that right now that that's what's happened. Yeah. The perspective I have on all of the relationships I have with the different roles that I play changed. Mm. It so, does. yes. Yeah. And once you get to that space where you're no longer identifying with what they told you when you were a kid, like you said, or, you know, yeah, you seem to be this way. So, okay, that's the way I am. 
No, no, no. Or all the hurts or all the programs or all the overlays, all of that stuff. When your seed inside of you starts to really grow and this is the way out, this is what I'm saying. This is the way out. That tree starts growing and as it does, you start getting in right relationship with things within you. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a perfect way to put it. And there's a and there's a like there's an occult I'm going to bring an occult like a hidden not so hidden principle yeah. in here. Okay. And and like show some different examples of how this would work because your your body or your bodies like physical body, emotional body, mental body, energetic body, like they're vehicles, right? And it's this nested Russian doll thing of um vehicles, vessels. And you are this fractal this seed inside of these vehicles or these vehicles are inside you however you want to look at it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now one of the things you're talking about the changes that are going on is like um when you when you have those changes and people say you've really changed man you're you're different <laughs> what's going on i don't like you get those things right yeah. it's because You've changed, you've allowed something to happen in these vehicles, let's say emotionally, mm -hmm. there's a, there's, you've, you're at a different frequency setting. Mm -hmm. You've changed the frequency setting and that kind of allows more of you in to unpack. There you go. More, more, more of you. Now, the reason we know this is a thing is because when we talk about walk-ins or when we talk about merging with other beings or demon possession or whatever <laughs> you want to talk about right these in all of those cases these things can't stay in an environment that is toxic to them or doesn't really work for them the closer a match they are to the environment the more they can stay there but they can it's so they can come in but it's uncomfortable and mm -hmm. and they're going to go out again now someone who gets demon possessed right all of a sudden they're hanging out in their room with the curtains closed they don't like sunlight they're staying away from sunlight they start eating junk food they start listening to really heavy music they start drinking alcohol they weren't doing any of this stuff before mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. now they're doing it hardcore what's going on why have they changed so much because this thing that is trying to use them as a vehicle mm -hmm. is trying to get them to feather the nest in just the right way so it's got something that it can hang out in comfortably right now and then and then you get like with a proper possession what you'll get is the body will start to break down the movie um venom it, it don't go and watch the movie because it's not a great movie but right but but you could read the synopsis of it this is like th th there's this alien thing that comes in and like symbiosis like symbiotes with this guy's body it's from an old comic book but anyway mm -hmm. what's going on what he finds out is that this thing gives him like he can get huge superpowers from this when he lets it drive the bus for a while but it's killing him right. he's losing kidney function he's losing liver function this is an actual thing with what we would call like a demonic possession because right. those bodies aren't those beings aren't compatible with a human body and so the human body will start to fall apart Oh, well, it's the drugs that are making them fall apart. Well, kind of, but it's also the thing that's in them that's making them continue to take the drugs. It's a feather the That's getting nest. their body to fall apart. Now, your, your body, Debbie's body, or I'll say, okay, Hamish's body from 10 years ago, his, his emotional state, Hamish's food he was eating, Hamish's all of that stuff, that was kind of okay for the amount of true self that I was carrying around at the time but then true self dropped the memo and said you know at some stage we're going to have to knock off the coffee at some stage we've got to knock off the alcohol you're going to have to go off meat for a while and then you're going to have to go on meat totally and off vegetables for like there's these changes we're going to have to do to instigate some changes in your body your vehicle so that you vessel, can so that more of me can actually get in here and the thing is if you think you're the character this mm -hmm. person that went to a boarding school and has a wife and three children if you think you're that then you've got this habit of life that you have and you're not going to change that why would you change that but if you're aware that that's just a character and you're actually this other thing you're a, you're a tiny 
you're a tiny expression of this fractal and more of this fractal wants to unpack. Like this seed actually wants to start coming into being a, a seedling. It wants to try and grow into a tree at some point. It's not going to be comfortable. And so then you get like the dark night of the soul or you get a my life's falling apart or because you didn't you didn't either didn't get the memo or you didn't listen to the memo that said this has been fun but we need to make some changes because more like i can't unpack any more of us in this vehicle if you keep doing that and you go la 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 it's all good la la and then you get really sick and then three days later you get back out of bed and you find you can't drink alcohol for some reason you just can't there's lots of lots of older people have this story like they have a fever they get sick and and they they try they force themselves to try and start drinking alcohol again because of the social stuff particularly in australia around drinking alcohol and they just can't because it's like well we suggested it we tried to you didn't want to know about it so now we're going to force the issue because this seed is growing into a seedling like Mm -hmm. this tree is going to grow so it's those changes when we feel those physical and emotional and energetic changes through the body, I really feel there's a reason for it. And the reason for it is more of you wants to come in. And I would like to also suggest that it's not always necessarily physical changes in the vehicle that needs to happen. Sometimes Um, it's emotional and um, because I know that a lot of my expansions didn't involve i mean anyone that knows me knows i work out like a fanatic i mean and i don't i'm not i'm not obsessive i just love it and i go every day if i can Mm. but i haven't given up alcohol completely and i haven't stopped eating you know i'm not vegan and i'm not in other words um i get sleep i drink a lot of distilled water there's some things that my particular vehicle insisted needed to happen for me just to be in a better space in general. However, yeah. all the work that I've done on myself, mentally, emotionally, being willing to look in the mirror, take responsibility, mm. those things right there can be just as important as the physical vehicle. Funded. Are but you willing to take full responsibility? And the more you're able to take responsibility, the more your body, you're, the more you can embody. Yeah. And so, yeah. and I would, I would argue that when your inner being comes in, your body operates differently too. So, totally. so something like a glass of wine may not even touch me, whereas a glass of wine might knock someone on their ass. So, mm. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying, I'm, I'm making totally. that. No, no, and, and, yeah. and there's a, there's a thing about that is there's no, from where I'm standing, from what I know now and what I've experienced now, there's right. no there's no correct or incorrect around that. I don't like that whole, well, to be holy, you can't eat meat to be, to be spiritual. You can't drink alcohol to be like, it's like you can't drink alcohol, but you can mainline ayahuasca. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) What? They're both plant medicines, right? They're both made from plants. So really it's like, there's no, for me, there's no correct or incorrect around that sort of stuff. At all. But it's, it's just, what you were saying, though. It's very specific for your inner being. I was just so making specific. sure that that we sort of address the fact that it is individual for everybody. Yeah. Because it's very. really, I do feel, though, as I feel into it, is that your level of willingness to take responsibility for your life and your actions and what you're creating has such a great bit of deal to do with how much of your inner being you can contact because your being cannot come into a vehicle where you absolutely refuse to let them take the steering wheel Mm. you know no it's everybody else's fault you know everybody else is to blame for it you think that being can really come that the essence of yourself can really come in and take over the steering wheel or or give you information that will make or wants to (laughs) (laughs) he he needs a few more lifetimes (laughs) (laughs) let him let him stew for a while no there's going to be some energy balancing going on in that situation (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh my gosh at least we have a good sense of humor about all this stuff because I mean, I really have started laughing a lot more since all this stuff started coming in. Yeah. Because 
I mean, I really do feel like some of these personal expansions, if, and again, everyone's personal expansions are going to be completely different. I would recommend highly though, is take a look at how much you're willing to be responsible. And that may be for the vehicle. It's just like yeah. you were saying, you know, are you listening to the fact that your body really doesn't like alcohol and it makes you sick every time you drink it? If you keep drinking it, there's probably a problem there. Um, or, and that's like a and small sometimes, example. Yeah, and sometimes it would be just to listen and get the, <clears throat> well, we need to knock off, we need to knock off coffee for a bit. Yeah. And you're like, well, is this going to be forever? <laughs> uh, no answer. And it's like, so, so what, what the presentation of that is, is like, are you going to actually listen? Because this isn't a thought in your head. This isn't like a, a channeled message from Zohan or whoever. That like <laughs> this is a this is actually an inner knowing that's like come up from the inside out. Unless you are we, Zohan. <laughs> yeah, we we need to knock off coffee for a bit, right? <laughs> and, and so it's a bit like a willingness test. It's like, are you going to listen? Because if you knock it off for a, a week, a month, two months, then something happens and you get offered a coffee and you're like. Yeah, that could be good <laughs> and you have the coffee and it's great and you're like right. look at that we're back on coffee no drama and it wasn't like you didn't need to have abstinence you didn't need to be a monk in a right. cell praying all day it's just about it probably for your health and your blood work it was great to knock it off for a month or two or a couple of weeks but were you going to actually listen or not That's and you it. showed that you were going to take responsibility and listen and say all right now we can actually deliver something a bit more complicated and he might actually pay conscious attention to that. Right. And I think that a lot of that is just, you know, are you in tune with and feeling into the things mm. that are going on around you? I would say those people who are watching the videos, although there's probably not 10,000 people watching our videos, <laughs> but, but the people that are watching our video right now, I know you guys out there are able to really look in the mirror because you wouldn't be watching our video unless you could <laughs> really and um, either that or you just really you like to like laugh at us or i don't know why you would be watching us if you're not interested in what we're you know talking about and that you're aligning with it if you're still here on this video it's a long one um yeah. it's going to be because you, you it's going to be because you probably really can look in the mirror and you really can take responsibility and this is just a message coming through that's like hey now's the time because i'll tell you what i feel and you tell me what you think about this hamish mm. for me i feel like because this opened up for me and it clicked in another another thing clicked in it's almost like the start that would the stargate thing that starts clicking in and click Zzz, yep. click and then it's zzz, yep. click another thing clicked in right and i'm like okay can you get to the rest of it so that i can walk through that portal <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, totally. yeah so um what was i even saying <laughs> um but as as the things click in it's kind of like i feel that getting in right relationship with all things in my life is significantly increasing the chances that it's going to be a good one now. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Relationships yeah. Sure. are going to come in. I already see that. I know that um, my business is going to flourish and, and for as long as we're still here, um, I'm mm. aligned. I'm aligned with my mission and my goal, like with Intuit, um, Intuit Oracle, like all the stuff I'm doing right now is all about people getting in touch with their inner knowing and the cards are so aligned to do that. And then I've got a new product that I actually had come to me and I, everything's flowing now, you know? Um, natural, not synthetic. Natural, thank you. It feels so natural and mm. it's day to day. It's a day to day walk. You know, you wake up in the morning and you're like, you're naturally walking through. You're not, you're not clicked into, like there's a lot of this Oh my God, I got to get to work. Oh my God, I got to get this done. I got to do this and I got to do that. That got to do, got to do. That is all programming. Otherwise, it's kind of like, what would really be a great thing to do right now that would that aligns with where I'm at right now? And it's always what you need to be doing in the moment. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. I really feel like doing this. And then you've, one thing flows into the next. And, and I'll tell you the other thing that's changed a lot is 
the triggers are very, very minor. Like I laugh at the trigger. Like I'm triggered, but I'm laughing about it. And I'm like, I cannot believe this, but it's funny. And, yeah. and I might stew about it for five or 10 or sometimes even a half hour. I'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe this, but I'm laughing about it. And that's so mm. much better than feeling disempowered. Yeah. So it makes yeah, sense. it is. It yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. 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 Perfect sense. And it's the, it's, I mean, those, those messages and that taking responsibility and having more come in, it, it's like, it, it's also like the more, the more you can um, seek out the natural, like yeah. really, and, and, and settle for nothing less. Like if the choice is between synthetic and synthetic, just do nothing. <laughs> go and do something else like do not settle yeah. for the synthetic yeah. at all i agree go like go towards the natural as much as you possibly can and just go actually no i'm not going to hang out with that person or i'm not going to go into that situation or i just refuse i flatly refuse to do that i'm gonna i'm gonna look for the natural and then then it's like well it's going to present itself more and you're yes. going to be able to lean into it more because yes. you're not wasting your time on this crappy synthetic copy overlay, like whatever word you want to use. Like people say right. we're living in a simulation. Like look up the word. Simulation just means bad copy. Like it's right. a synthetic overlay copy of what's actually, actually there. Yeah. And, and like my caveat to that or my explanation of that is the thing that is actually here underneath is it's us. Yeah. We are the real thing in here underneath mm -hmm. all of this copy that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like, well, I'm trying to get back to new earth. I'm trying to get back to the true earth. I'm trying to find Tara, I'm trying to find <laughs> Gaia. It's like, yeah. for fuck's sake, find yourself first. Yeah, because that's it. wherever you are, the only real thing, the only natural thing, the only true thing going on here is you. Yes only and yes. so yes into that and then see what see what that resonates out off you but forget about all that other stuff because all that overlay all that synthetic compression and all of that copied it's just it, it's just going to lead you nice. in circles it goes nowhere it just goes nowhere yeah you know that is i that is probably the best place to leave this video is just what remains when you, I don't know, when you do click into that right relationship and, and you, you live in the natural and you seek the natural and you mm. just decide against the synthetic, yeah, no, I don't want to do that. It doesn't have to be yeah. a big deal. Yeah, I don't really like that video. I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. I don't really you care about the war that just started. I don't really want to yeah. watch it. <laughs> Whatever yeah. Yeah. it you, is. You specifically make a choice to say, no, no. Yeah. No natural. I'm I'm not interested in circuses. I'm not interested in party games. I'm not interested in how much you're trying to wow me or I'm Drama. interested in natural. And if the only natural thing in the room is you, then get really interested in the natural part of you. Yes. And when you do, you're going to draw to you natural people that are also in that space. That's how and it works. then you're just Eden. like, oh wow, Eden, Eve, Eden, whatever I'm thinking. Yeah. The Garden of Everything. Eden, isn't that right yeah. back to the place where we really want to be? It's not necessarily the Garden of Eden, but you know what I'm saying? That is to me where we birth into new earth, new us, superpowers. We return to who we are. We return all of our knowledge and knowing and everything else. It's through mm. that path. And we yeah. talked about that in one of our videos about the straight and narrow. Oh, you yeah. You know, just staying on that straight and narrow. We've just defined the straight and narrow, actually. So anything yeah. else that you, you listen, you want to go, you know, follow different XYZ person and see what they have to say about this and that. You might just be stumbling in some weeds and step on a pricker bush. You're not going to die from it unless you go yeah. off that cliff over there, which almost <laughs> I've kind of had a lot of experience almost doing. But yeah, yeah. if you just and, keep going, and, go ahead. And your, your, your right relationship, your correct relationship thing folds back perfectly into all of this because 
walking down that straight and narrow path, like we don't really know what that looks like. Like yeah, some people we say, well, there are, there are, there are no spaceships that the spaceship don't get on a spaceship with anyone because that'll be the wrong or there's no this or there's no that or there are all these blanket statements but yeah. really what it comes back to is like someone someone puts a glass of wine in front of you on the straight narrow path and you're like well is that a is that pulling me off the path into the prickles like the spaceships or is that keeping me on you're like well i don't know i can't and what you said first up is the guidance what is your relationship with yourself around debbie drinking wine exactly and if that, if that's a synthetic relationship yes. then the glass of wine is synthetic and you're off the pass but if you have a natural and true and authentic relationship with who debbie is when debbie drinks wine yes you're not off the path thank you and you can and look that's you can bullshit example, yourself about many, that but like, yes you, you could totally bullshit yourself about that and that, hey, it's your life, right? Right. Go for it. But, right. But it's there to be known. Exactly. And you know that when someone puts a large amount of money in front of you or a large amount of debt in the shape of a bill in front of you, your relationship to who you are around money, that story that you're believing, mm -hmm. that's going to drag you in the prickles. But right. someone else... They got no drama with that. They're just like they'll just pick up the bill and pay it, or they'll pick up the money and throw it over their shoulder, and they'll just keep going because right. their relationship to <laughs> yeah. who they are with money is yeah. not an issue. Right. Like, That's why it boils like, down to it. Right relationship. Yep. But the inner being, the the blossoming or the growth of that tree, really does help. And I guess I want to encourage everyone. That tree is growing. There's not mm. anything that you can do to stop that tree from growing. You can slow it down by just like resisting. I'm not going to. It's like the tree's still going to grow. And yeah. as that tree grows, things are just going to be like, Ugh, you're going to change. You're going to yeah. change because that, that, as, that fractal of you as it grows, it doesn't have the same identity as you do. It doesn't have oh, the no. same perspectives on all of these relationships that you do. And you're going to find yourself saying, wow, I do feel different about money all of a sudden. I don't know why. And yeah. as you do that, the only thing I would encourage you is to enjoy that ride because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's such a freedom ride. And anyone who knows me is going to know my middle name is Freedom. Yeah. There was a poem written yeah. about me at one time, and I was called freedom in that poem. And I yeah. proudly wear that. That is, that is why I never believed in the whole concept of the big one. I'm not saying we're not all made of the same soup. And I'm not saying there's not a collective and integrated, you know, we're all like in, in, in relationship to each other. But I never believed in that because mm. to me, that's not freedom. And I just no. believe freedom, man, it's maybe because I'm an American. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's just inside me. Anyways, mm. is there anything that you wanted to wrap up with? No, uh, that was perfect. I think that was perfect. I yeah. really enjoyed this conversation, Hamish. Thank you. It's like, it's been wonderful spending time together and, and having this conversation. Anyone has anything to say in the comments, please you know, feel free to add to the conversation. We're having these conversations so you feel like you can join in and be a part of them. Um, and at listen, Hamish does a really great sessions. So, you know, I'm not really at this point doing sessions right now. I've got my hands full with the, the other mission that I'm working on right now. So I'm not saying if someone didn't have a real pressing need, that I wouldn't, but I, yeah, I, I'm on mission right now. But Hamish, he's available for sessions, and I'm gonna make sure his information and those two last videos that he posted are linked in there because they're really good. Um, all right, well, we'll do this again soon. Yeah, yeah <laughs> these we are will. conversations worth having. To me, I got something out of this, as and that's why we do this, guys. We're having conversations so we can make connections connect the dots and hopefully help you guys connect some dots for yourself so anyways all Definitely. right hey mitch until next time bye guys thank you, for having me, thank you, you. bye